Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for the segment, we have Mike Lavatola, co-founder and CEO of Foxtrot, the modern convenience store marrying in store curated discovery with rapid 30-minute delivery and five-minute pickup convenience. Mike, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thanks so much for having me. All right, you got it. Tell us more about Foxtrot and what makes your offering unique. Sure. So Foxtrot is uh, sort of what we call the modern day corner store. We uh, launched in Chicago and are now in Chicago, Dallas, DC, uh, and very quickly expanding to Austin, Boston, and other cities. So the best way to think about what we do is, you know, we work hard to create sort of your dream version of a corner store, right? So amazing coffee in the morning, a great cafe midday, and then really fun wine and snacks um, at night. Some customers choose to shop with us in person, uh, some online, but most of our customer base is actually um, transacting across both. So they might come to us for coffee in person in the morning and then let us bring them that uh, ice cream uh, to their doorstep at night. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Get unexpected guests in 30 minutes. You have deliver, <laughs> delivery there if you get those weird cravings in the middle of the night. Um, how did COVID impact Foxtrot? And did any trends emerge that you think are here to stay? Absolutely. So, you know, I think the obvious thing that we saw coming was um, anything touching delivery went up and we certainly experienced that. And what we were afraid of was that, you know, traffic to our retail stores would um, decline. And instead, what we saw was, you know, a, a big up, uptick in delivery, but then actually traffic to our retail stores increased as well. And I think that really gave us the confidence to, you know, um, push forward with our retail expansion um, nationwide. And when we took a step back and, and sort of looked at it, you know, people were were really viewing Foxtrot sort of as a, um, you know, as a substitute for maybe going out to a full-fledged restaurant experience, um, but but this sort of like moment of joy throughout the day, right? So if you're at home and you're sitting on Zoom working all day, you know, popping out to the store to discover a new varietal of wine or a new flavor uh, of ice cream was was Joyce was just this uh, much welcome break in in people's day. So you know, rather than COVID slowing down our retail expansion, I think it gave us a lot of confidence that people want high hospitality driven um, in person experiences. Yeah, I remember during COVID, it was a treat to at least get to the food store and get out of <laughs> Anything the house. Anything works, yeah. right? So, um, quick question: if if you're within thirty minutes of delivery or five minutes of pickup, I'm imagining yep. these are mostly in urban markets. Correct. Yeah. So we do have some uh, suburban, but we certainly start started in urban in urban cores, and that's where most of our uh, stores are now. Got it. And you recently raised 100 million in a C round, bringing the total funding to 160 million. What will the latest funding round allow the company to do? Um, it's you know really doubling down on the you know things that we love. So uh, of course there's expansion um, of our retail stores within cities we're in, and then into new cities. So as I mentioned, Austin and Boston will be our next cities. But it's really about expanding the, the team to focus even more around our merchandising set, which is really how we differentiate, um, and then also growing our product and engineering team. So all of the technology that, that connects our retail stores to the online experience, and then our e-commerce platforms, our courier experience, you know, kind of that, that whole stack we've developed internally, and the funding ground will allow us to continue to invest there. So when you think about future growth for Foxtrot, it sounds like it's going to go to brick and mortar, then also the technology on the back end. Where are you going to derive that growth from? Um, so, you know, certainly um, new store and new city expansion, but then also, you know, um, doubling down on, on categories where we see consumers are looking for something new, right? So when you think about the traditional convenience store, it's probably not your first thought of where to pop in and get a great, you know, locally made salad, but that's the type of experience that we want to bring. So the funding allows us to, you know, again, in invest in commissaries, invest in the supply chain and invest in getting our customers um, a totally unique and updated take on a, on, on, on a category that's kind of been one of um, last uh, resort. And Mike, from an industry perspective, how important do you think the omni-channel presence is going to be for retail? Um, it's everything. So, you know, for us, our, our e-commerce growth strategy is our retail strategy. And what we found time and time again is that if you look at customers acquired through kind of, you know, paid online channels versus customers that we get to, you know, introduce ourselves first in, per in, in person, become their favorite coffee shop, be, become their favorite place to to recommend a bottle of wine, like that's ultimately how 
you build those relationships online. So for us, you know, there isn't a retail customer and an online customer. It's all the same customer. And um, you know, being able to develop the technology that that can bridge those two experiences is really the secret sauce of the company. All right, Mike, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you.